You said yes to Christ. That's right. There is a duty that we now have yes. to partner with him Amen. Amen. to take possession yes. of our soul. Mm. It is our duty to partner with him. Yes. What am I talking about? Because some of y'all got that look on your face. That Look, it's okay. It's okay. What I mean by partner with him to now go back and possess or go through the process of being sanctified yeah. and being purified and, 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 forget, and possessing your soul. What this is talking about, well, the question that we need to understand or we need to ask, well, what do you mean my soul? What is my soul? And why, why do I need to go back and take possession of my soul? Why do I need to partner with Christ? Why do I need a partner with the Holy Spirit to go back and now take, start taking possession of my soul? Well, the soul is your mind. The soul is your will. The soulish realm is your imagination. It is your intellect and your emotions. If we do not partner with Christ and allow him to take us on this walk and this journey. Yeah. Mm. To now fight this fight to take back possession of our soul. Well, guess what? Well, let's go back to the story. What he gave the children of Israel, he gave them some earthly weapons, and he also, you know, was, was with them, and you know, he was because he told them, look, I'll never leave you, forsake you. And I and if you go in and fight the battles, I'm gonna go in there and fight them with you. But what he's done for us. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 10, verse 4 and 5, it talks about the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. They are not earthly weapons. In other words, you can't go and cuss out no spirit. You can't go and, 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 and beat up a demon. So he's given us some weapons to fight and wage this warfare. As a matter of fact, Ephesians chapter 6 tells us like this. Mm -hmm. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 6. Somebody, Everybody turn to Ephesians chapter 6. We're talking about taking back possession of our soul. Because listen, Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12. See, Ephesians tells us that our war is not against flesh and blood. See, the children of Israel, they were going into the land of Canaan to fight some flesh and blood. Okay? They, were, they went in there and they had to drive out these, these, these inhabitants so that they would have the peace of God. And that the, the presence of God could rest with them. Without all these distractions. But what happens when we get saved. And I just want to just kind of just take some time right here. And just kind of help some folk out. Because you got saved. You, 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 I don't know where you were. You were at church. You might have come here. And you might have said yes to Christ in an altar call. And you came up and, and you know, and you felt the, 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 the Holy Spirit tugging at your heart and you've come, you came up here and you know and tears were in your eyes and you you know you repeated what the preacher said and, and then but then you went home and you didn't feel like you felt when you came up here. Why you don't feel like why you don't feel like you felt when you came up here is because now there is a duty to now partner with the Holy Spirit. To wage a war. To possess your soul back. Let me just kind of, somebody find uh, found Ephesians chapter 6. Mm -hmm. 12. Yeah. Amen. 6 and 12. Read down. I'll read that from the new uh, life. What? Yeah. Um, you may read the whole paragraph. Yes. It says, a fight to I'll tell finish. you when to stop. Okay, fight to the finish. And that about wraps it up. God is strong, and he wants you strong. So take everything the master has set for you, well-made weapons of the best materials, and put them to you so you may be able to stand up to everything 
the devil throws your way. This is no afternoon athletic contest that we'll walk away from and forget about it in a couple of hours. This is for keeps, a life or death fight to the finish against the devil and all his angels. Amen. Do me a favor, before I go on, everybody turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. See, where we, where we find it is, let me just tell you what happens when we get saved. Because Jesus said, look, you must be born again. Amen. Okay, he said you must be born again. But what happens? You get born again. You say yes to Christ. But your flesh doesn't, you know, your flesh doesn't get saved. Okay? Your flesh doesn't get saved. The flesh still wants to do, it still wants to carry on and continue doing what it was doing. And the battle, the battle that we wage, okay, is in our soulish realm, Amen. okay? See, mm -hmm. this is what happens. Let me just read the scripture. Uh, find, um, I'm going to start at verse with uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, and I'm going to read verse 4. It says, for the, we everybody there? Mm -hmm. It says, for the weapons of our warfare, stop right there. Everybody stop, look up here. It says, for the weapons of our warfare. Well, we're not the children of Israel. We don't have no spears. We don't have, you know, there's not any land per se that we're going in to fight, okay, to take possession over. And what Paul is trying to tell us here is that, well, now in the new covenant, our war is different. It's not a war in the physical. It's a war in the spirit realm. And he's telling us that the weapons, now you can follow with me, verse 4 says, that for the weapons of our warfare now are not in the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses or strongholds. We're destroying speculations and every lofty thing that raises up against the knowledge of God. Stop right there. Verse 5. This is why we have to. You have to make a commitment tonight that you're going to war. A call to war. What was the subtitle of my wife's lesson last week? You know, I listened to it. Um, you know, I got the thing from Carl the other Saying day. Saying yes to God, but my flesh says no. But what was the subtitle? Going into battle. Going into battle. Okay, just kind of taking up on that. Listen here. The reason why in verse 5 it says destroying speculations and every lofty thing that is raised against the knowledge of God. I need y'all to get this. I need y'all to get this. Look up here. When you get saved, mm -hmm. again, we understand that the soul yes. is our mind. Mm -hmm. Amen. You got saved on Sunday. Mm -hmm. But the mind still is going to come and raise arguments. Yes. Amen. Amen. Okay? Amen. The mind, because the mind has not been renewed yet. And so, when it's talking about casting down every high thing, so, let's just deal with the mind for a second. Yes. Okay? Let's just deal with the mind for a second. Okay? You get saved. Okay? But you don't feel like your mind tell you, look, that, you know, you, it felt good, look, it felt good on Sunday. But this ain't working. It's Tuesday now. It's Wednesday now. This ain't working. And so the, the mind, the soulish part, the mind is raging war and, 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 and has exalted itself up against the knowledge of Christ. Amen. And Amen. you stepping out on faith and trusting that your choice to follow him mm. was of not. Hmm. And so, one of the ways that you wage war on your mind, okay, you have, listen, this is a war. It's a war. This is a, it, listen, the war is a, it is a war. I do not want anyone to leave here. We're not, you know, the last thing I want to do is paint for anyone a faulty expectation of what the walk of Christ is. Okay? Because when you say yes, you enlisted in a war. Yes, you did. 
You enlisted in a war, whether you know it or not, whether you want to be in it or not. And what happens is that now you are at, now your mind has to be renewed. Yes. Yes. By the washing of the word. And so this is why you have to continue washing, you have to continue staying in the word. Because guess what? Your flesh and your mind got 30 year head start. Okay? It has, it has, it's right. It has years of porn. It has years of cussing folk out. It has years of self will uh, 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 in it. And so what happens is that the mind comes to wage itself against the knowledge of Christ. And so if you're not, to, and look, if you, and that's why I said, if you kind of have this notion, that your Christianity, that you can be, you know, as radical as you were on the world, mm. but now have not taken a radical approach to changing your mind. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Then you're going to continue having the uh, King's Dominion experience of Christianity. you going to be, it's going to be a roller coaster ride up one day. Hold on, honey. Roll, uh, 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 up one day, down, down the, next the next day, day down the next because you have not committed mm, to changing your mind. Yes, yes. You have not committed to getting your mind renewed in Christ. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in uh, Philippians 2 and 6, it says, let this mind be in you, be in you which will oh, also Christ. in Christ Jesus. Oh, yes. See, we yes. have to fight this war. Yes. To gain possession of our soul, our mind. And this is why, look, you wake up in the morning, and I talk about, say this all the time. You know, like you like the car. You know, you get in your car, your car just taking you where it want to go. You just in it. <laughs> because why? Because you haven't brought your mind into subjection. That's right. And look, and this is a daily thing. Amen. This this is not Amen. something that look. I'm okay. Amen. I'm gonna practice this for a week. Yeah. Okay. I'm gonna practice this for a week. Look, it's a lifetime commitment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this other part of the soul. I see you, honey. The will. The will. In your handout, where it talks about the soul, it's your mind, will. We're gonna talk about the will for a moment. Self will. We've been walking around in self-will, getting up, waking up, doing what we want to do, going where we want to go, Amen. sleeping with who we want to sleep with, smoking what we want to smoke, popping what we want to pop, yep. watching what we want to watch, self-will. Yeah. But now you get saved. Mm -hmm. And so now you start talking about wanting to come under the governing of the Holy Spirit. Well, guess what? Mm. There's a war for that. Wow. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Because guess what? You've been doing what you want to do all your life. There's a war for the soul. We've got to take back possession of the will. And listen, this is not done, this is not a, a war that is raged or wrought in the flesh. These are all spiritual weapons that he gives us now. Because the only way that the will is overcome is through prayer. Mm -hmm. Your will is broken. Listen, anybody ever had a bad kid mm -hmm. or seen a bad kid <laughs> oh, yeah. whose will has to be broken? Yes. Yeah. 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 Our will, the will, our will, every day. Paul said this, I die. Hallelujah. Daily. This yes. is the man that wrote over two thirds of the Bible. He said, I got to wake up every day and die. Hallelujah. Because I got warrings in the flesh that want to go here yes. and want to do this yes. and want to yes. say this and yes. want to do this. And there's this warring yes. in my flesh. Where does it come from? You're raising up, brother. I'm going to say you're raising Thank up. Maybe you, you want to say something? Oh, I was just, I'm going to say that. Um, I'm breaking the flow now. I remember, <laughs> I remember praying for someone one time. And the person I was praying for um, was, a, was a Muslim. And I had been ministering to them, and they were coming out of that, um, wanted to come out of that, and, and you know, tell them about Jesus Christ and salvation, because there's no salvation all out, whatever. And while I was praying for them, I heard Rudy. I knew that was the enemy saying, this is going to be warfare tonight. Mm -hmm. When I went to sleep that night, and, and, and I understood what it was going to be an attack, because this is where the battle rages. And so I'm asleep and racing thoughts, racing thoughts. Here, I, I, I 
scriptures is going through my, my you know, prayer, you know, the, you know, mm -hmm. I can do all things for Christ's strength and meaning. All these wonderful prayers. And then next thing I know, future thoughts. And then the scripture over here. And, and I'm like, what in the world? I had to sit up in the bed and shake myself. <laughs> you know, because it was racing thoughts, racing thoughts. And then you understand that scripture, you know, that says, you know, that, the, the, you know, the battle, you know, it rages here in your mind. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful to know what to do with the race and thoughts, because it's like you want to maybe put your hand in your head and pull out the dirty stuff, that, you know, but it's racing right. thoughts and you got to know what to do. So I just shook myself and I got up and went downstairs and I laid on my face and I began to pray because mm -hmm. the thoughts was racing. I mean, it was like scripture here and, and you know, the word of God here. And the next thing I know, all kind of foot. It was racing thoughts and I had to know what to do with that. Yeah. So I had to go down and I said, Father, in the name of Jesus, I take possession Amen. of these thoughts and I place them under the blood Amen. you know and I just had to lay on my face and I prayed probably a couple of hours mm -hmm. and then it, I could, it's like mm -hmm. I could feel it's like my thoughts were lining up under the word of God yes. lining up mm -hmm. but I had a peace mm -hmm. and I went back up and got in the bed and went straight to sleep mm -hmm. that, that warfare is no joke yeah. racing thoughts mm -hmm. if you won't get no rest mm -hmm. you cannot rest if you have racing thoughts mm -hmm. You can't even sleep because the thoughts are constantly racing, all kind of things. And you just like, Lord, I don't know what to do. You know, well, if you don't know what to do, you're having a night like that, <clears throat> go pray. Mm -hmm. Go pray. Anoint yourself and go pray and place it under the blood of Jesus. And mm -hmm. even plead the blood of Jesus against those thoughts. Right. Those so racing thoughts. Right now. I had to do that. We, we dealt with the mind right